Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. All right, you have tuned in to The Mountain Gardener. This is your host, Ken Lane. We're here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And this has been kind of a detrimental week to the landscapes. I mean, that snow last week, before last weekend, what was that? Just a few days ago. Just, there was there was eight inches of snow in Prescott. Uh, the store, we didn't even open. We, we had eight inches. We were shut down. There was no power. The uh, snow had, had, had loaded up on these trees, and they just literally toppled over. The damage was extreme on many, even established trees. Here at the garden center, I had a, a ponderosa pine that had been up, had to be at least 100 years old, fell right over. So it went right over my dumpster, just whoo, right over there. So I spent the Friday morning uh, last week just kind of chopping things up, clearing things out. So that's rough on trees. Some of your trees, they're deformed. They've had broken branches. I was out in my backyard just, just last night cleaning up stuff. I've got a either a gopher or a ground squirrel or something. It's getting under, underneath this majestic juniper, and I don't want it to eat the roots. I, I, I'm going after them. You're, you're in my zone. I'm coming after you like the Marines. We're going out shock and awe on them. I'm walking back there going, why is my Chautauqua tree, why is it Why is it going down? What is going on? Well, the snow had lighted on that and just had it fall. So as we've had a week worth of damage. I'm still, even last night, finding some additional damage in the yard. The secret with that, when you have that, you do want to clean up those, those limbs. Have a nice clean cut. Anytime you've got a plant that's got a ripped arm or torn or ragged, ragged uh, bark coming off, it's sort of like your skin. If you have a nice clean cut, if you sew it up, it heals right up. But a nice jagged, I mean, just ragged type of, of tear, the skin's coming off, it's going to take a long time for that skin to repair. Trees are very much the same way. So you want to have a nice clean cut, kind of clean things out, get rid of Anything that's broken, dead branches, actually dead inside of a tree is like a magnet. It draws problems in. You never want to have dead material on your shrubs and trees. I mean, ever. You want to clean that up immediately. So some folks say, oh, just do it in the winter when you're pruning up the rest of your trees. I cut it out whenever I see a dead limb show up. It might be wind damage or in this case, snow damage, or, or, or tip bore, any, any kind of damage showing up, what happens is bugs fly around the landscapes, the forests, and they're just they're roaming around, and they've got receptors that can tell when there's stressed out trees. They, they, they sense where the dead wood is. They're looking for easy prey within your landscape or your plants that aren't going to fight them back. So they'll light in there, start burrowing through the bark, and start eating the bark out. Um, if it's dead wood, there's some really large beetles called flathead borers. This is a huge, almost like a grub, only up in the trees. So it can burrow into that dead wood or damaged wood, and then it starts continuing. It just goes right into the live wood, and then it goes right down the tree. So this is pretty serious. You do want to clean these trees up. Uh, any plant that, that's that's got dead material, go ahead and take the time. And I would say do it before they leaf out. So you you should feel the pressure at this point. So it looks like the weather, I know this week is pretty cold, wet, windy, but boy, the next week looks like spring is in the air. I mean, the landscape over the next 10, 14 days is just going to erupt with beautiful new growth. I, and I'm ready as a gardener. I, I am ready. I, I can't wait. I'm going to start. Oh, I can't say that put in new tomatoes. I'll wait a couple weeks. I'll start putting my first summer edible things. I've got these plant protectors that kind of create little mini greenhouses over plants uh, that protect them, that force them to grow early. But I'm I'm ready to go. Bring it on. I, I want spring. I am tired of not seeing the sun. I mean, all of us up in northern air, we're not only got cabin fever, but there's not even light coming into the windows. You got it. I'm ready. I want to be out and garden, get my hands dirty, and just and go after it. 
for now, I've got the chainsaw still powered up. And so we've been, I've got dueling chainsaws on that ponderosa pine, had some elm damage. If you've got a tree in your yard that was deformed and it broke a branch, obviously clean that up. If it's just deformed, like the purple leaf plums, at least here in the, the, the Groom Creek, uh, Highland Pines, the, the Prescott, higher ridges of Prescott, where it really got that heavy snow, it, it laid open the center of this plant. And so if it goes through some real heavy freezes after that, the plant virtually solidifies in that form. I mean, it's ugly when it's opened up. Uh, a purple leaf plum has been blooming spring, uh, uh, pink. It's got a beautiful, beautiful vase-shaped type of, of form up to about 15, 20 feet. It's a beautiful plant. Well, the sap was flowing. They were starting to bloom. That snow came, got on top of those blossoms, and just cracked open the center of these plants. What you need to do then is try to bring some tie tape or something. See if you can bring those branches up so that they'll get, get back into that vase-shaped uh, look to it and then let it go through either a couple cold nights where that freeze just locks in that that sap so it will start to solidify in that form or you want to keep it that way until the new growth happens the new foliage you get another band of ring and then all of a sudden that plant will again become strong enough new, new layer of muscle and it will start to solidify in that form again and hopefully you recover if it broke branches and you just hate the tree anymore like it destroyed the form, the shape, the, it's just, you were on edge anyway. Now a branch broke off. You're going, I hate, I hate my tree anymore. Well, you know what? That chainsaw can go a little lower right towards the edge of the ground to kind of clear it out. I mean, sometimes an ugly tree, when it's really misformed like that, it, it can take years and years for them to recover. So something to watch. And this, this is not a, an unusual event in the mountains of Arizona. Now, I've never seen a snow that was that heavy before, but it, but it was, it just, def it just did tree damage. It just hurts me to see that. Oh, established branches just cracked right off. Junipers just loaded up with snow and just big branches breaking right off. Clean those up as best you can. And then when you get done, fertilize them. Many times you can grow your way out because you're right here at the leading edge. I mean, literally next week, spring is in full growth, right? I mean, just right now. Fertilize those plants right now. Use the all-purpose plant food. It's a 744 mix. The, the, the uh, bird guano in that is just like magic for bringing out new foliage, bigger foliage, bigger flowers. It just really helps those plants to help flush new growth. If you're on, if you're borderline, I would say fertilize that plant that was maybe damaged some. Let it grow for a month or two. See how it looks. See how it flushes out. Right now, without the foliage, just a few blooms, you can kind of go, oh, I can really see the damage. But if we can encourage new foliage to come out, sometimes it can hide that and you just won't see it later. And it takes on a better form. It softens up that misshapen form on those lilacs or forsythia or the, the elm trees. I would say fertilize. And what I'm doing for my, my chitalpa that got a broken branch, I fertilized it with the all-purpose, that 744 all-purpose plant food. It is like magic for the mountain plants of Arizona. It really works. Secondly, I added an extra element. It's called humic, H-U-M- I see humic. So I put all purpose food and humic. What they do, the food actually fertilizes like steak and potatoes for plants. It makes them robust. You want to build muscles, all purpose plant food. Humic actually feeds the opposite, it feeds the soil. And so the worms and the mycorrhizal fungi and the beneficials that are inside the soil, it kind of tickles, it wakes them up. So now you got a plant that wants to grow, put on muscle, and then it sees a soil that's alive and it goes, whoa. I'm going to root, I'm going to put more roots down here. If a tree fell over, quite a few trees fell over and people are trying to bring them back, take the weight off the top and bring, bring that tree back and then put the humic, especially on the side that was where the roots were damaged. Uh, put some of that, it will encourage new roots to start forming. Those two things can really help you out of uh, a damaged plant, all-purpose plant food, and humic. Put them down at the same time. It doesn't matter. 
and then water it in or actually the soil's so warm now or so warm and, and starting to and, and moist that's all you need chuck and go it'll go through the rock and the fabrics and all that so if just get it down the ground the plants will have to stand a better chance in your landscape be right back with lisa waters lane with your garden questions You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Hi, Waters here with this week's Plant of the Week and our show-off for Scythias. A new standout for Scythia with very large, very bright solar yellow flowers that adorn the plant from head to toe. Relax! This showy spring shrub is beautiful and requires no pruning or cleanup. This show-off is just days away from bloom and limited. Don't wait until these big bull for Scythia are gone at just $39. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love show-off for Scythia love to shop. Spring is the best time to be outdoors, garden, and create a personal oasis in your yard. If you don't know where to start, Waters Personal Garden Service allows you to book an hour of one-on-one time with an expert without the crowds. It's easy by phone or through our website. No lines, no waiting. Purchase a $200 gift card and we'll line you up with one of Waters' private gardeners. You're going to love your yard again. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott or at watersgardencenter.com. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. Okay, back in the studio is my favorite gal in all the world, Lisa Waters Lane. Hey, lady. Hey. It's been a good week. I think it's been a great, well... Great. Uh, well, I'm about to have an <laughs> ulcer running the company there, but the staff is staying with us. Yeah. And we had a full staff meeting mm-hmm. to kind of encourage you know, safety training, just, just what to look for. They feel un, you know uncertain because friends are on the street out of jobs. Now, just to reassure them, just to, hey, we're part yeah. of this family. We'll get through this together. We've been through three of these already, mm-hmm. three not, not this kind of thing, but right. we've been through 9-11. We had a road construction. We've been through the downturn, Great Recession. We'll get through this together, and here's how we did it. And just kind of shared the insight from the top top view, you know, upper upper end. And they seem to be they're now, now they're on fire, going, "Let's do this, boss. Let's yeah. go." <laughs> it's kind of fun. Anyway, it's just we're getting better and better at this. Every week we go by, it just gets better. Yeah. So the main thing is don't some some folks have gone into hysteria. We had two kind of go. Whoa! And literally, they're in the hills now. They're literally out in the forest. Of course, that's kind of a garden center employee. <laughs> uh, but most of them are here, and we just yeah. reassured them, you will be able to pay your mortgage. You will mm-hmm. be able to, you know, vacations are in. You're going you're gonna to be, we're going to get this through this together. So yeah. I think it's good. And it's nice. It's It's been really pleasant having um, customers come in. Yeah. And they're, you know, they just say, I needed to be outside. And I'm yeah. so glad you're here and you're outside and we can walk through and it's beautiful. And so I think uh, it, it's great for the community. It's one yeah. of the places you can get out and see beautiful, beautiful did, stuff. Did you see the Facebook post? So I, I, I did a, it's actually a very scary thing. <laughs> I posted on our Facebook page, Waters Garden Center, open or close? I'm nervous to to close with all the edible gardens, vegetable gardens mm-hmm. going in. Seems like we need to be here, but what's your opinion? Now, anytime you ask everyone, what the community, Should what your opinion is, <laughs> every there's literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of mm-hmm. comments. Usually it's just a like and they move on. Th- yeah. These are people taking time to actually type out stuff, mm-hmm. which is super unusual. Every one of them was positive. There was one knucklehead, I call it the knucklehead factor, Aww. who said... Uh, you're not essential. You're not needed. Just close the doors and leave. And I went, that that is a knucklehead. But everyone else went, shut up. Here we go. We want to. We're coming in. I'm coming in today. So and it's and we're fun. taking all the precautions. We, yeah. We're following like crazy. the six foot distancing rule. We're wiping yeah. down carts and counters and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's almost becoming a habit now to yeah. keep doing all of that. So maybe that's a good thing. It's, it's kind of fun to watch the bubble effect. So last week, folks were still kind of a little close. This week, mm-hmm. they're kind of bubbling around. Just everyone's respecting their space. Yeah, that you can good. just see. They're, mm-hmm. 
been around. They're starting to train. Got to reprogram the brain, and yeah, it's gonna. It's good. It's all good. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, this is about garden questions, isn't it? It is. So should we garden questions? We, not <laughs> yeah, gardening. <laughs> not pandemic. Purely questions. <laughs> gardening. I don't. So yes, Tom would like to know what to do. So that really heavy snow yeah. we had uh, pretty much broke the top out of his Vanderwolf pine. Oh. Um, and you know now it kind of looks like a weird shrubby yeah, Dr. Seuss. weird thing. Yeah. So he wants to know: Is there a way to really recreate more of that center, more pine look, or is it just always going to look funky? So yeah, this is super. Evergreens are super easy. Whether it's a Theodore cedar, Arizona cypress, a spruce, a pine with Austrian pine, whatever, whatever it is, evergreens. What you do, you'll cut that top off that break that, that broke. Um, nice, nice, smooth cut. So take pruners out. It go right through. It's very soft wood. You'll take the longest side branch, and you'll use a piece of bamboo or something, and you'll use it to, up against the trunk, and you're going to use that as a splint. So you're going to bend this next strongest, the longest of the side branches, bend it up and point it towards mm -hmm. the sun. And it will naturally, as it grows this next spring, it will naturally take over. They're just programmed. Go to the moon. Just keep growing straight up. And what will happen is that branch will now take over as the central leader. And so just keep that on for a couple of years. And then you'll find that another side branches will start coming off of that. And it will cover. It might take a couple of years. Mm -hmm. But it will naturally start growing. Probably after this year's growth, it will look, you'll never know, that it was broken, or your neighbors won't. You will, because you <laughs> put the splint on, but right. you, no, no one will ever see it. Pretty short order. By the end of next spring's growth, for sure, you'll never know it was broken. Right. Easy right. easy recovery. Okay. Yeah, that was a, a, a storm that caused a lot of damage. Yeah, very much. So a lot of breakage around, but what are you going to do, right? Enjoy the snow. <laughs> there you go. Or scrape. I don't know. <laughs> It wasn't fun as a garden center owner because the power's out. We've got to come in and we come in and take scrape two acres right. and then sweep all that weight off so, mm -hmm. that, so our plants, our inventory, our income, our, our, our kids' grad school money doesn't <laughs> become damaged. Right. And so we came in and that's what we did all morning, mm -hmm. just sweep off the weight so they wouldn't break right. like that. That was a crazy snow. We have uh, Spartan junipers out front. And when I first got up that morning, and they're probably, what, six, seven feet tall? They were so bent over. They looked like they were about two feet tall. I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Got to save it. They recovered. They, they swept did. it off. Oh, you did. Right back yeah, up. they recovered because we got the snow off of it. All right. June would like to know, is it too late to prune fruit trees at this point? Oh, no. Yeah, go right ahead. So, so the pruning 101. You can prune 10% of the foliage mass off of any plant you want, any time you want. There are no rules. This would be a major branch encroaching into the walkway, a broken top, something that's growing way too far, the haircut. You can prune up to 30% of the foliage mass, usually between New Year's and the end of March. And you can fudge a little bit more. I know some have already started to bloom. That's okay. It's better to clean that stuff up and keep going right away. So absolutely go for it. If you happen to make a mistake, we make our own fruit and berry food, fruit, fruit tree, and vegetable food. It's all organic. Sprinkle some of that around the drip line of that fruit tree. It'll come right out and cover up any mistake you might have even remotely made. It's absolutely a good time. I think you should feel the pressure. You should like get on it. Don't wait till April at this time right. and ask me because yeah. then it is too late. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, they haven't leafed out. I would say if you the sooner the better because it's getting warm next week. Things will yeah. really start to grow out fast. Okay. So Richard has another fruit tree question concerning codling moth. Yeah. When do you know when to spray? Okay. So, so codling moth, that's the worm that gets into apples and mm -hmm. pears. So it's different kinds of different kinds of bugs like different kinds of, of fruit trees. And the codling moth really loves apples and pears. A little tiny worm, and you bite into it and you see that wiggling, you know, half body that you and bit you spit through. It out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what that is. It's a little tiny moth called a codling moth mm -hmm. that lays her eggs, usually on the blossom as the fruit blossoms. Uh, she'll lay her egg inside that pollinated flower, and now the fruit will the, that flower will actually uh, pollinate and heal right over top of that apple. And that's used right over that to egg. That's usually where you see one exit tunnel coming out mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a fruit. 
she'll have about two more generations that she'll, two more waves of codling moth. Um, she'll then, as the fruit forms, will lay her egg on the outside of the fruit. It will tunnel through the skin into the heart of the plant, mature there when she's ready to go fly around, burrow back out, and that's where you see multiple exit tunnels in a, in a fruit. So what to do? So you spray it with horticultural oil, as the petals start to drop, so that's when it's pollinated, that's when they first show up. That's the first egg. That's the most detrimental. So come in and get some horticultural oil, and as the petal looks like it's snowing underneath mm -hmm. the tree, spray it right then. Now what you do, you hang a codling moth trap up in the tree, and you leave it there. It's a sticky trap that has a pheromone that attracts them. You monitor that. Mm -hmm. Some websites will say, oh, put a, put a cutting moth trap. It'll catch all your problems. No, that's not how it works. There's thousands of them that, are, that will attack that tree all at once. It's monitoring. When do I spray the next time? So you watch that, and you just keep it up there, and you'll see like one or two little tiny moths show up. Oh, looks like it's happening. The next night, you'll see like 20 of them. You're going, oh, that's it. Spray it right then. You can hone in on it, and that's really how you... You get ahead of codling moth. That's okay. if you need more, come in and talk to us. We can make sure you got no worms in your fruit. We we know how to do that. We're experts at it. We got all the stuff that'll help you. And we can keep it organic too. Okay. All right, Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. We will be right back. You're listening to Ken Lane, aka the Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Hi, Waters with the Plants of the Week and our Roman Beauty Roseberry. This Mediterranean beauty has graceful, arching branches that flow over rock walls, raised beds, or container's edge. A culinary herb often used in potpourri. Rugged, deer-resistive, evergreen, likes crummy soil, drought, and abuse. Now that's my kind of shrub for under $36. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love unusual healthy herbs, they love to shop. Some things are just better together. March is the best time to fertilize with all-purpose plant food from Waters Garden Center. But pair the all-purpose with humic acid, and it's a one-two punch of garden power. Humic acid gives your soil organic matter that helps plants' roots receive water and nutrients. So it makes fertilizer work even better. Like salt and pepper. Coffee and donuts. And hey, you and me. Ah, thanks, Ken. All-purpose plant food and humic acid better together and only at Waters Garden Center. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. So last weekend, there's a phenomenon going on, just, just so you know. This whole uh, uh, run on grocery stores, on, on edibles and that kind of stuff. There's, there's, we're seeing the exact same thing at garden centers. So anything to do with edibles, fruit trees, grapes, berries, blueberries, kale, artichokes, all the vegetable plants, so there, there's seed. I can't keep seed in stock. Organic, non-GMO seeds, organic plants. It's just, it's a phenomenon. I've never, I mean, I've been in this business for, well, many, many decades, and I've never seen this. And so it's it's encouraging. So customers are still out. I think there's a little bit of cabin fever going on where people want to get out in the fresh air, and they're coming in, and they feel safe in a garden center, just kind of separated by plants. And so we we're just seeing this. So we had, I must have sold 50 Fruit trees, just just fruit trees, not shade trees, not evergreens, not privacy screens, just fruit trees. Uh, the planting crews are slammed. They're just, they can't keep up. So it's encouraging. I'm not complaining, but um, if you're doing fruit trees, it, it's good to do. One thing to watch with that, especially if you want to eat from it right now, fruit trees need to be at least usually seven years old or so. So before they're old enough to start uh, fruiting and blooming. And so you really want to do your homework on two things before you go out and buy a fruit tree. Just just get put on your radar. Really do your homework. 
and I'm not talking Google homework. I mean, this is where it's good to talk to a neighbor that's obviously got fruit trees. They know what they're doing. Go to your nursery. You you trust and and and. and you really trust. What happens is we see a lot of desert varieties of fruit trees come up here. They're sold and they bloom too early. And so the tree will grow just fine, but it never forms fruit. So you need to buy the right variety, a late blooming variety. You want one that's old enough. Many of your box stores, they'll be selling whips. They're only a two, three, four year old tree. We're going to put it in the ground to harvest fruit three, four years from now. You're nowhere close to even remotely being old enough to, to actually have fruit on it now. And then secondly, you, thirdly, I guess you want to make sure you got pollinators. So some trees need a buddy to help pollinate. It can't be a Fuji apple and a Fuji apple. You need a Fuji apple and a honey crisp. They need to be two different varieties. You need a Bing cherry and a black tartarian cherry, two different varieties, and they help to pollinate each other so you get a larger fruit and more fruit on those trees. So it's a little technical fruit trees. You don't just go to the, go to the, we're going to the box store, we're going to buy a fruit tree. You might have just bought a shade tree, and it might not even be that good at, at that. So really, this is one you really want to do your homework to know. So all of our trees that we have, they're all going to have a graft. That is, we're taking a strong root structure that, that adapts to clay soils because mountains have clay soil and alkaline water. We're going to graft the right variety. So we'll see a fruit tree that's out in an orchard that is absolutely perfect, a Macintosh, a Gala, uh, just a, the perfect golden delicious apple. Go, whoa, that's a good looking apple. We'll take a cutting off of that and we'll graft that cutting onto this hardier rootstock so that we get an exact clone of that tree that was out in the in the field, but it's on this more robust rootstock. We'll grow that on for about, well, seven years, and then that's what shows up here at my garden center. Most garden centers, family nurseries are that way. They're going to have a more mature, they'll, they'll cost you $10 more per, per tree, but it's going to be older, older tree. It's going to fruit like now. I mean, you could literally leave... The fr it would fruit right now, uh, or any of our trees in our racks. So we don't sell any whips or any small things. We, people come to us because they want fruit now, and so we try to deliver that. But check those those things. You don't you want a, an older tree if you want fruit now. You need to make sure you got the right pollinator. And you really, really, really want to make sure that it's the right variety for high elevations, for the mountains of Arizona. You don't want those desert varieties of apples and pears and cherries. And, and of course, i got to get it out there. No. Citrus and, and avocados do not grow at the high elevations of, of the mountains of Arizona. But apples and pears and cherries and apricots and nectarines and plums, figs, I've got beautiful figs and pomegranates, grapes do exceptionally well. And I've got every form of berry. If you want to grow berries, come talk to me. I grow the most beautiful raspberries. So many blackberries. The grandkids and I just, we're, our faces are, are, are literally black by the time you get done. I know how to grow grapes. So many grapes. We'll take the grandkids out and we will eat till we are virtually sick. I mean, it is so much Fun. I mean, you want cross generational, having the older generation teach the younger how to garden, appreciate the outdoors, to to make things grow, to the joy of harvest. If you want to teach kids the magic of nature, have them plant a seed. Just have it come up and grow their own lettuce or radishes. It's like spreading magic. Literally, my kids. I call my oldest uh, grandchild. He's seven. Call him Garden Guy Junior. When he comes over, we just tag team around the yard and we just enjoy the backyard, watch birds. For me, it's just a joy to be in the landscape with children. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Hi, Lisa with the plants of the week and her majestic giant pansies. Mammoth blooms smother this 12 inch plant right through winter. Fragrant like its fairy face cousin, this giant bloomer has the perfect balance between evergreen foliage and flower brightness. Hardy and carefree, this pansy brings the garden back to life, all for just $7.99. You'll only find them at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love majestic pansies, they love to shop. 
Once upon a time, Fred the Sage and Bob the Yucca watched a herd of deer eat their neighbor's garden. Hey, Bob, said Fred. It's a good thing we're native Arizona plants from Waters Garden Center. Right, Fred, said Bob. We can handle tough Prescott dirt, hot sun, low water, and we look great in the garden. You betcha, Bob, said Fred. Hummingbirds and bees love us, but that deer sure doesn't. Be like Fred and Bob. Go native at Waters Garden Center. Safe, natural, and organic. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. All right, we've got Lisa Waters Lane back in the studio. She comes each week, and this whole segment is nothing about inspiration from a from my beautiful wife's perspective. Mm-hmm. And so whatever's on top of mind for you, that's what we talk about. And so oh, okay. Should we, should we share the news? Like uh, uh, all of our kids are out of work. <laughs> that's depressing. And, and they're all coming home. Well, not all our kids. Well, not all. I mean, the one in the army, <laughs> he's, he's a physician's assistant for uh, basically if you shoot cannons in the army, he's the guy, his, he and his medics kind of take care of you. If you get drop a shell on your foot toe, He's the guy. Mm-hmm. So he's testing like crazy. He's stuck in a PL. He's just watching this whole whole thing, medical thing happening, making sure his guys are safe. So he's, mm-hmm. he's been busy. Uh, but all the other kids, we got, um, they're coming this way and they're going to camp out a little bit. I said, hey, why don't you come help us at the garden center? Yeah. So it looks like most of them said, that sounds like fun. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll see. We got daughters coming back, son-in-laws. We'll see see how it goes. So in, in a yeah. week or two, you might actually see a whole bunch of Ladies. Even more family <laughs> showing up. I can't. I am actually. I'm sorry. They're they're in such a right. yeah. world of hurt. Mm-hmm. Been out of work for like three weeks, but I'm so happy that we've got a business that is is thriving in this whole whole right. thing, right. and we can have them come in. Mm-hmm. So they're from Texas. Kids home from uh, grad school, California. So they'll come in, and um, and then we can we can encourage them, or I don't know. I'm not sure how to play it. I'm not sure. It'll be interesting. It'll be a true family business again. <laughs> it truly will, yeah. It's kind of fun. I mean, yeah. We've never had all the kids working the business before. It's always been the older kids and the younger kids are at right. you know, swim club or mm-hmm. soccer practice or band or school and the other old. And then they would graduate, go off, and then the, young, the next, we've never had them all. Yeah. There might be brawling. We might have to set up a boxing, a boxing uh, a ring. ring in the back, kind of <laughs> see what happens. I can tell happens. you right now who would win. <laughs> <laughs> our kids, our family is not that way. It's all, all no, good. No, I'm kidding. It's just, just kind of fun. They are lanes. We are strong opinions. <laughs> we are confident and we're loud. Loud, loud and lane both start with L, so it kind of gets heated. We're not Italian, though, so we're no. not going to go, oh, what are you doing? No. Did I just offend all Italians I'm out sure there? You did. <laughs> I apologize. Yes. Anyway, let's get off that subject. Okay. Let's go on to whatever you're you're thinking of. So what I'm thinking of is it's a great time to think about growing some of your own vegetables. Oh yeah, popular. S- wonderful thing to do because then you can control um, what they're treated with. Yeah. and sprayed with and so you get some really nice organic great veggies going for you they taste better oh, they do. when you pick them fresh i mean if you pick them fresh from the farm and ship them you know a week later you get to eat them okay they're good but if you can pick them fresh right in the garden i mean there's nothing like asparagus where you just snap it off and eat it i mean hardly any asparagus makes it into our house because it's like candy i don't think so it fresh does. <laughs> I mean, spinach and let it cauliflower boy to have your own head picked off go grill it or cook it yourself oh it's like magic yeah so right now is definitely that cool season veggie so cool season veggies are a lot of your leafy greens so your lettuces your cabbages um, swiss chard things like that um it's right now we because we got what two three shipments in yeah it's crazy I mean, michelle like i'm going what are you doing michelle don't you know there's economic stuff going on <laughs> can we risk that much but then she's already got half of it sold it's oh, crazy yeah. and it looks beautiful some really yeah. pretty stuff so and the other thing with the leafy greens that i really really like is i can grow them in a pot yeah 
and if I mix some pansies in there or some violas or a snapdragon, it looks really nice. So you can have something pretty that you can also pick from and eat. Yeah. So I was just up in there and there. Um, so I'm not a big beet fan of the actual beets. I love the leafy part of it. Yeah. Um, they have one up there called Red Ace that is a super dark red leaf on it it's absolutely gorgeous and i was thinking how pretty that would be with some of the pansies around yeah, it mixed that's a good in idea. and i like to take the tops off and, and use those in our shakes and then you can kind of as that beet grows you can harvest that later yeah, over well. and over and over again mm-hmm. like like chives or onions right. or mm-hmm. even lettuce a collards are, are all right. sort of that same mm-hmm. ilk, uh, how you harvest them. Right. Swiss Swiss chard is the same way. I just yeah. love the colors on Swiss chard. And there's a uh, kale up there that is another just dark red leaf on it. Absolutely gorgeous. And I just think, yeah, you can put them in your garden bed and they'll grow and you can harvest from them. But you can also throw them in pots if you don't have a big bed, but you want some fresh veggies. What a great way to grow it. You do not have to garden like your grandparents did. They don't have to be out in the garden, out in the yard. They got their space. They better not leap the fence. They're they're marching through the garden in a straight line. That's the only way to garden. You can there's no rules with gardening. Right. And some of those darker colors like the kales, mm-hmm. the red ace, those those brightly colored stems on Swiss chard, that is some of the healthiest food. If you're look you really are looking for antioxidants, the mm-hmm. health anti-cancer, th- those things the bright colors, not just the green, but right. the bright reds and pinks Oranges and, blue, and yeah. They are super super healthy for you. So we try to get as many of those in mm-hmm. our morning shakes as we yeah, can cuz it's so healthy. Right. And look we're just look look at this muscle here. Look at can you Ooh. Don't, okay. I know you can't Put look around, can you? Away. Yeah, I yeah. know. <laughs> Thank you, dear. So some of the other things that we have out there too, um, your cabbages, we've got broccoli, we've got cauliflower, we got Brussels sprouts, every kid's favorite, right? Yeah. I like them. Our kids like them. <laughs> That's true. But we got weird kids. Uh, we also have onions. Uh, we have scallions. We have leeks. All those kind of things that you can certainly put in now. Spinach, another yeah. great one. Um, and we have rhubarb for yeah. those people who love their rhubarb pies. I saw artichokes out there too. We have artichokes side by side. And yeah. we have strawberries as oh. well. Oh, yeah. Uh, so a great time to pick up. I mean, everything's looking fabulous it's a great time to pick it up and and get it planted i mean you can harvest what two three months off of those easily a lot of the leafies maybe even more so and and strawberries will trick with that is is there's ever bearing strawberries Mm -hmm. and then there's all at once strawberries so if you're doing preserves you want all at once you want to pick the entire harvest all right Right. now Mm -hmm. if you're doing cereals and your salads you do ever bearings it's always got a little fruit all the time strawberries are just they're almost a weed mm-hmm. in the mountains of Arizona. They're super easy to grow. You, it's just true. It's about the right food. Put a little bit of that vegetable food on there, and they will produce. I mean, this year, mm-hmm. produce strawberries. I mean, like right now. Right, right. We also have, for you daring people out there, Ooh. or people who have greenhouses or Arizona yep. rooms, we have a really nice selection of tomatoes and peppers yeah. in. Now, I wouldn't put them out in my yard and say, go be free right now, because yeah. we still get some chilly. cold nights. Yeah. Um, but great if you uh, have a nice window you could grow it in, or a nice greenhouse. You could definitely get them started. I am having customers from Wickenburg. You know, they mm-hmm. then go, I'm going to the city, which no one wants to go in the city right now <laughs> or i can go up to yeah god's country so they're coming i talked to a couple okay. wickenburg folks hillside kirkland mm-hmm. skull valley cordis junction sure uh, camp verde cottonwood valley, a little bit yeah. warmer the east side jerome's they they probably can plant those outdoors mm-hmm. so we're getting we've got influence all over the, this part of the central arizona area mm-hmm. but if you're up in the higher elevations the prescott uh, prescott valley it's probably good to protect them or put them in the greenhouse or put them in a container, put them outside the garage during the day and during the night, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. So definitely have a nice selection of those in. So it's a good time to pick. We also have a really nice selection of berries in right now. So blackberries, uh, raspberries, marion berries. Poison. 
Poison berries, yeah. yeah. So just a few different varieties of those out there, and they just grow so easy here. They're super easy to grow. I mean, they yeah. like the mountains. They love bright days, cool mm-hmm. nights. They just love that. Yeah. So I put them on a drip emitter, kind of like a tree, and they just thrive. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So. And also lots of really beautiful fruit trees still in yeah. uh, with more coming in. So it's a good time for those edibles. If you want to eat out of your backyard... This looks like the perfect week to start doing all that. All the edibles are in. So Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners will be here all week. Helping folks get the edibles in their backyard. Be right back after this. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's Waters with two T's, GardenCenter.com. Hi, Lisa with the Plants of the Week and our winter blooming heat. With 2018 upon us, you might as well start the gardens outright with one of these few winter blooming flowers. Ferny evergreen leaves are topped by the sweetest of bell-shaped pink flowers. Loves to be planted right out in the yard. Enjoy showing off in winter at just $36. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. For people who love winter blooming heat, they love to shop. Wondering why my garden looks amazing? Well, that's personal. The personal garden shopper service at Waters Garden Center, that is. Before talking with my personal shopper, I had no idea which plants would be best for me. But now my garden is bursting with flowers and buzzing with hummingbirds. Just go to watersgardencenter.com, click on shop, and choose personal garden shopper. A Waters Garden expert will pick the perfect plants for you, personally. The Personal Garden Shopper, only at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. We are back. This is Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener, uh, one of the most interesting radio hosts you'll ever find on the airwaves. And here's why. I get to interview some of the most interesting people. So I, I'm hanging out here with uh, Andrew Lagastrole. Or why did I get there? I get it. Help me out with that last name. It's very Greek, isn't it? You need to eat more <laughs> lasagna. It's <laughs> it's actually Lisignole. Lisignole. Yeah. Very Italian name. Yes. Very strong name. Lots of character. I love that. In Thank fact, you. I find just pronouncing, I talk with my hands more. <laughs> so anyway, Andrew is the go-to guy for from Trees of Corrales. This is a very large, uh, I'm cutting edge, front edge uh, tree shrub perennial grower for the mountains of, of, era of, of the Southwest. Yeah, you supply Arizona, Texas. How far Colorado, do you go? Utah, Colorado, Wyoming. Front range area, that right. kind of stuff, right. all that. West Slope. So we like it because his Albuquerque, their, their climate's very similar to yes. the central highland area of Arizona. Uh, and so his plants adapt really well to here. Your perennials are, you've got a collection that is bar none the best for the mountains. You've got it going on. Uh, your trees are straight, larger caliber, m- more mature. Just you've got, you've got things that are for us. Uh, and so, and they plant and they grow well. But you were sharing something with our staff about climate change. I don't want to go debate why climate change, but it is changing. But you're actually developing uh, trees that will adapt no matter what happens. They're going to grow and thrive and live, have longevity. Did I explain that right, or what's? Yeah, you're pretty much on target. The the, the term is what's going to be termed climate ready trees okay because ken as you know trees we're planting those it's kind of a legacy it's something that we plant for future generations they live long and with our changing climate uh the, some of the trees we're planting now will not be the ones we want 90 years from now so if we're planting a tree today Uh, which trees will be here in 90 years or in 30 years. Or 100 years or 200. Some of them are... Some of them live that long. Oaks, they're ancient. Yes. And uh, the Nature Conservancy was uh, granted some money to do a 
sort of come up with a list of trees, and this is for Albuquerque. So it's going to be similar, Very similar. To, yeah. to here in Prescott uh, in a lot of northern Arizona. We looked at these uh, models, and we went to the most conservative model as to what Albuquerque is going to look like in 30 years. And in 30 years, Albuquerque is projected to be like Las Cruces or El Paso. 90 years were to be more like Tucson. Really? Okay. So, like for you here in Prescott, you're probably it's probably going to be yeah, similar. I could see that. So, when you look at that, we were uh, charged with and these are five tree nerds like myself that uh, have been in the industry for decades. What trees did we feel would meet these parameters? So we collectively came up with a list of 300 trees. Then we ran it through various sieves of uh, uh, actual empirical data on uh, what their temperature extremes that they can handle. And there's not a lot of data on that. Uh, And there needs to be more research. But that said, we were able to narrow this down to about 30 trees that we felt in the Albuquerque area slash Prescott that would probably uh, be those that we're going to see in 90 years. And so it's just an interesting way to look at uh, what we as a grower should be providing uh, folks like yourself to bring to your customers. Are These are trees that are going to perform. And we found a lot of interesting nuances, like some of the things that we do feel will be here in 90 years, we currently can't plant because they can't take Oh, they can't take the cold yet. Cold temperatures. Maybe a little bit warmer. Interesting. Like mesquites or, yeah, correct. or so, uh, acacias yeah, or some of these other yeah, kind of acacias things? Acacias don't make it at all. No. The only mesquite that makes it in Albuquerque currently is honey mesquite. Yeah. And that will make it. But some of the other mesquites, no. Yeah. They don't make it. But they certainly will 90 years from now. Yeah. But then again, uh, those trees will never reach a canopy that, let's say, an American elm will hit or an ash. So are there some elms that should make it then? And we figured through a lot of the data, an, uh, an elm that is on the market today, Frontier Elm. Oh, great choice. Will yeah. make it. Really? And, and that, that's a tree that we're figuring will make it. Lace bark elms, that's another one that will make it. And okay. Actually, frontier elm is a hybrid. It's half lace bark elm. Uh, those are two elms that should be doing fine. Sure. And so it, it was just an interesting approach, um, especially getting five very opinionated people yeah. at tree a table. Folks, tree, yeah. tree experts, I could see that totally. That'd uh, be interesting. I'd love to be a fly on the, on the uh, wall on that one. It, it got <laughs> it got pretty, uh, yes. Yeah. So willows would never make that list. No. High it, water use. They don't live very long anyway. They don't it, live to be 90. You know what's interesting with that is they can't project – uh, water, uh, moisture. They okay. can't project what that's going to be like. They can project temperature, highs and lows. Uh, and the other thing that they're projecting, and this was interesting, this might be too much detail, but the lows will not change that much. Really? Yeah. But the high, so you're going the, more extremes. The, the, the high will be higher, but the low will stay the same. Right. That's hard on plants. That's very, wow. that's very hard. And the, the other thing is the heat island effect. The more, I hate to say it, that we gravel our, yeah. our yards, Sure. Uh, there, there's a lot of alternatives to gravel. But as we gravel our urban and suburban neighborhoods, that's just creating heat islands. So that bumps up another four to five degrees. Gotcha. And, and that's you're starting to get some pretty hefty high temperatures so elms what else so we've got we've got frontier elms we've got some of these so share with the listeners what if i'm planting a tree for myself now and and for the generation so i want my kids to see this or it's a memorial tree for a a wedding or or a lost one or whatever what are some trees i could plant now that would actually live i mean is that oaks or ash or locusts there are, are they there are some oaks um there, there's some trees like you've got. There's a native tree here, uh, netleaf hackberry, Celtis reticulata. That tree is made the list. Really, but right now there are no Celtis reticulata that are. How would I say this? Um, 
not Dr. Seuss-looking trees. Gotcha. More finessed or they're, cleaner, they're, native, they're, yeah, more wild-looking? Yes. Got, yeah, I was yeah. going to say that one is kind of a wild it's, western. It's, yeah. yeah. Now, now, on the other side of this, common hackberry is very well-behaved. Right. So us as growers are looking at, do we hybridize these? Do we select these trees? And that can take another 25 years. But from this study, from Climate Ready Trees, it gives us some impetus to say, we need to start selecting trees like netleaf hackberry that's going to be more well-behaved yeah. and can actually work in a landscape where you could put a, a, a bench underneath it and sit. Instead so of now when you do that... Or do you do that from a cutting? Do you try to graft onto a different kind of hackberry? Or are you harvesting seed, starting all those to see which one's the most behaved, the genetics are the best? Or those? How do you go about that? Uh, okay, the first step would be selecting the tree. So okay. either out in the wild. See a hey, better looking that's tree? That's a good looking tree. Yeah. So gotcha. you, you have to clone it. So you, whatever method that is, it would not be from seed. Okay. It would be from a cutting or from uh, grafting uh, a, a branch or a bud, uh, but different ways of propagation, asexual propagation. So you see a really good-looking tree. So now your radar is out. Every time yes. you see a wild hackberry, right. you're kind of the go-to collector guy. You're like, well, I, yeah, there, but there needs to be bunches of us. Yeah, and I and since this is going out over a big area that's got. Siberian elm. Yeah. A lot of people call them Chinese elm, yeah. but they're actually Siberian I elm. I just call them a weed. A weed. They should all be... And, and, and everybody runs from that, and elm is generally a four-letter word. If if anybody out there can find a seedless Siberian elm, oh yeah, that you call be. Ken up, and yeah. he'll call me, and we'll give you thousands of dollars. Yeah, that, that'd be great. <laughs> wow, it's fascinating stuff. Andrew, with Trees of Corrales... Super fascinating how, how the industry is thinking from your level, the grower breeder level. You're developing in 20 years what we will see in the mindset. That thank you for sharing that. That's super interesting. That's cool. All right, Ken Lane and the Mountain Gardener. We will be right back. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Gardening and you don't know where to start? Waters In-Home Garden Service comes to you and identifies what you have and how to make it better. Design advice, water strategies, vegetable and flower gardens, soil and food needs, and problem solving. Always problem solving. You'll instantly be a better gardener. All for just $200 of expert time with a coupon to fill your garden dreams without ever leaving home. In-home garden consultations from Waters Garden Center. We can be at your home this week. Some things are just better together. March is the best time to fertilize with all-purpose plant food from Waters Garden Center. But pair the all-purpose with humic acid and it's a one-two punch of garden power. Humic acid gives your soil organic matter that helps plants' roots receive water and nutrients. So it makes fertilizer work even better. Like salt and pepper. Coffee and donuts. And hey, you and me. Ah, thanks Ken. All-purpose plant food and humic acid, better together and only at Waters Garden Center. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. I'm not sure where I got this from. This week, probably through the Facebook feeds, I've been taking in so much data trying to maneuver our business. I mean, we're open. Waters Garden Center's here. We're going to stay open because uh, people are putting their edible gardens in. We have a responsibility to be here to help people feed themselves from the backyard. So we've loaded up with vegetables, loaded up with berries and figs and fruit trees so that folks can do that. And so until... As long as the governments allow us to do that, we, we, we're seen as agriculture. We're seen as like a grocery store, only for gardeners that are in their, their yards planting the lettuce crop or the broccoli or the cauliflower. It's good to put all those in right now. But someone brought up, I think it might have been a gardener, said gardening is a wholesome, safe, pleasant, fun predictable activity that we need in a crazy, uncertain world. I went, wow, 
does that capture how I feel when I'm out in my gardens? I just want to unplug, just be back there. And this week looks like we can actually be out there and watch a sunset, maybe with the fire pit on or maybe not. It's just going to be really nice this next week. I mean, as we garden, rather than, than hoarding stuff, sometimes we can maybe feel like we have our control over something in the backyard. That's how I feel when I'm when I'm out there. And so that's what I want for you as well. I think maybe this is an opportunity with the kids, extended, extended vacations, spring breaks. Uh, maybe part of that homeschooling is going to be, here, let's go try. Let's, gardening is trying. It's not absolute success every time. It's nurturing. It's a living, breathing thing. It's like raising up a puppy dog or, or a cat. You're just nurturing this living thing that's growing from the earth and Sometimes you put them in the perfect spot and they just thrive. And it's like it's like a magic moment. You focus on those. And sometimes you're exposed to a little bit more sun and the soil just wasn't quite right. And, and you have a failure, failure. And that's where you learn. That's why gardening is so incredibly social. Neighbors talking over fences, over just over techniques that work. I've got neighbors walking up and down the street, and we hang out and just we just chit-chat uh, while we're talking, you know, talking to the dog. Uh, I think that's what gardening brings people outside so that we can maybe be more neighborly, take care of each other, and learn some garden advice from each other. I think that's what what gardening truly, truly is. So the garden classes, we are still going to hold garden classes. Every week, we're going to have garden classes. They've been a bit cold because they're outside in the fresh air, really spread apart. Mostly folks are watching this online through Facebook Live. That's how we're mainly, we're trying to up our game with that. So if you want to watch the class, go to facebook.com forward slash Waters Garden Center. You can, you folks know how to find us. So go to that and then uh, you can watch it every Friday at three o'clock. And then the beauty of that is once it's online, then you can also view it at any time. You can show up. And so this coming, there's three really good garden classes coming up. This coming week is the new flower introductions. So flowers are very much plants. When you put a plant in the ground, in the landscape, it's sort of like adding fresh new paint inside the living room or, or bedroom. That's what adding plants into the gardens is like. So it, it brings, freshens things up. We're going to show you the hottest new flowers for 2020. What's new? That's, that's the third. April 10th is gardening for newcomers. If you're kind of just learning, kind of tune in for that. It's always extremely well attended. Then I think one that's going to be blockbuster, April 17th, 3 o'clock. It's on a Friday. Herbs and vegetable gardens, garden to table. How do you increase your veg vegetable edible harvest? So we'll have all the inside, and then we'll be stocked up full, getting ready for that here at the garden center. Throughout the week, Lisa and I, we are camped out here at Waters Garden Center. You can find us. We're both. We're, we feel like we need to be here as community leaders, give comfort, give a, give a bright spot in our community. We want to glow and give confidence to our leaders. To our, to our customers, to our neighbors. And that's why we are staying open to help folks in the gardens. Bring is the best time to be outdoors, garden, and create a personal oasis in your yard. If you don't know where to start, Water's personal garden service allows you to book an hour of one-on-one -on -one time with an expert without the crowds. It's easy by phone or through our website. No lines, no waiting. Purchase a $200 gift card and we'll line you up with one of Water's private gardeners. You're going to love your yard again. Water's Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott or at watersgardencenter.com. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.